Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and when it comes to this brewery, I would always associate them with, you know, the kind of light drinkable sours, you know, uh, lager beers paleos, things like this, you know, very light kind of sessionable beers. And it's a lager beer that we're going to have a look at today. So for this review then, we are going to head a bit north of me here in Skona, up to Stockholm, the capital city. And we're going to have a look at another beer from Stockholm Brewing Company. So this particular beer is simply called Rice Lager. It comes in at 5.2% ABV. I think you know what style this one is. But this was released as part of the Local Osmoskalik Assortment through System Bolaget here in Sweden for February of 2021. So uh, yeah, it's been a little while since I've reviewed a beer from Stockholm Brewing. I think the last one I did was filmed back in like November or December, something like that. But uh, yeah, and that was, I'm sure that was actually a lager beer of some description, come to think of it. But uh, yeah, um, as you guys will know, if any of you've been watching the channel for any length of time, I have family connections to Japan. So I do enjoy a good rice lager. And I actually had one quite recently from Mikeller, which I thought was really well done. So quite curious to see how Stockholm Brewing Company's offering kind of weighs up against that one. And hopefully this is another nice beer from them. So yeah, let's see how we get on. Nice to return to these guys after quite after what feels like quite a little while actually. So um, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website. The link to my other reviews that I've done from Stockholm Brewing Company before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about stockholm brewing so stockholm brewing company as i've told you and as the name tells you who'd have thought is based in stockholm and the company was founded back in 2012 by nicholas jacobson thomas halgren and nicholas lenkel but they were also apparently the first craft brewery in sweden to open up a tasting bar at their brewery these guys were quite instrumental in having that law changed um, but by 2016 they were brewing around 150,000 litres of beer and the brewery were were originally based in Sudar in Stockholm, but more recently in 2018. They moved to a new place in an old brick house at Freehamnen, out to the east of the city. And they also had a restaurant there for a period of time as well. Uh, but they also had a collaboration on a small farm outside of Stockholm, which was called the uh, Karshamra, I think, Karshamra Trade Guard. And a chunk of the things that they were using in the restaurant were from there. Uh, and this was run by Agnes and Malritz. And they were also involved in the restaurant side of things as well. But unfortunately, um, they... Um, they had a few problems with that, but they have been starting to reopen it again for lunch, from what I understand. Uh, but the current brewer is Michel Arlene Vigat, and he's assisted by Alvin and Max. And these guys also have Sweden's first commercial coal ship as well. So they have been starting to produce a few more kind of sour beers in recent times. They've been focusing on that a little bit more, from what I gather. And you will see many of those being released over the next little while. They invested in two fodders in 2019, and then in 2020, they invested in a 2,000 litre brew kit, which took their brewing capacity up considerably to 300,000 litres of beer per year. They were also affiliated with the company Wine Trade, which was run by Ollie Bartlett, but he's now managing the brewery and the overall Stockholm Brewing Company. And he's actually been really helpful with my Stockholm Brewing Company reviews over the years. He's always, you know, messing, messaging me after each one and giving me lots of information to stick in the next video. Uh, but yeah, really nice guy. And hopefully at some stage we can get him with along with some of the others from Stockholm Brewing Company onto the channel to do a kind of meet the brewery segment. We will need to sort that out once this whole corona shitstorm kind of goes away. Um, but as of February 2021, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, these guys have produced around 185 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I would always associate this brewery with, you know, kind of light drinkable sour beers, um, you know, lager beers. I think I've had a couple of paleos and stuff like that from them as well, come to think of it. So, um, yeah, interesting brewery 
these guys. Their beers are really good for, you know, having with a meal. I think that's the intention, to be honest. You know, they are, and um, they have got their restaurant and things. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. You should keep an eye out for it with, uh, with Stockholm Brewing Company. But, uh, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about them for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So yeah, just a little quick look at the artwork for you there. It's quite nice, you can see uh, some of the different Asian flowers and things there. Um, yeah, this is like the, the Korean symbol for peace on the Korean flag. I think you can see down here you've got the Korean Hangul, you've got the Japanese Katakana, and then you've got the, the Chinese pictograms. So um, yeah, the rice lager, of course, very popular across uh, Asia, to be honest, not just in um, in Korea, Japan, and then uh, Taiwan or China. But um, yeah, this one I think should be quite interesting. 330 milliliter can. This beer was actually quite cheap. It was either 25 or 30 Swedish kroners that I paid for this. So let's assume 30 because it's the more expensive one. Three euros, about two pounds 50, and maybe three dollars 50 American for this. Um, yeah, I will complain about this already though. Laggers should not be sold in 330s. They should be in 440s or half liters. I'm going to say that straight away because that is one thing that always annoys me about lager beers. They need to be sold. Um, and bigger things than this but um yeah that's a mini complaint that's me being pernickety but uh, or nitpicky i should say let's get this guy out though and we'll get on with the tasting then 5.2 percent rice lager released in february of uh, 2021 through sistembo laget here in sweden let's have a look at this bit of an aggressive pour there so um yeah does this one contain anything else other than that no just says barley malt. So yeah, barley malt and a bit of rice. So yeah, let me just check that that's there. There we go. Yep. So um, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely, very rich kind of yellow colour, this one. Um, you can see there is a solid two thirds finger of a frothy. I would say perfect white head on this one. Yeah, perfect white. Um, that's going to fade away to be a quite thin foamy layer though, but there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. And overall, it looks pretty nice. There is a degree of natural haze to this one. And in terms of its colour, I think it's fair to describe this one as a kind of um, hazy golden straw type colour, a bright golden straw colour this one. But uh, yeah, in terms of a lager beer, nothing particularly surprising about it in terms of its appearance. Remember, the colour of these beers um, tend to be dependent on one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a little bit more, um, you know, thus you'll get a bit more kind of um, a bit of a darker colour to it as the sugars caramelise more but in the first instance it's dependent on the um, in the first instance it's dependent on the um, the the type of moss that you use brain fart there but yeah let's have a look at the aroma of this one and see how we get on nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance but it is one of the darker rice laggers I think I've come across so uh, yeah let's take a look at the aroma then and see what we have Ooh, it does smell quite nice. So again, one thing I find you always notice about these Stockholm Brewing Company beers is they do have an element of kind of, you can really smell some of the yeasty characters coming out of this one. So you do get a bit of that woody, farmhousey, slightly earthy kind of thing. And that's a common trait in these Stockholm Brewing Company beers. I think it's the type of yeast that they use. Um, sometimes that comes out a bit in the flavour, but not always. Um, so yeah, you've got a little bit of yeasty character in this one, definitely. But you can smell that lovely big sort of oily ricey quality coming out of this beer as well i really like how how that goes together in this one and um, if you've watched the channel for any length of time like i say you'll know about my family connections to japan my son is half japanese and um yeah it's the um the ricey characters that come out of this are really nice i love japanese sake and i think that's one of the reasons that i probably enjoy a good rice lager axe i think it's a kind of underappreciated uh, lager actually the asians actually do a very very nice um a very very nice lager beer actually some of the best macro beers i think that you can come across are the likes of you know um asahi yebisu um and uh, kirin and stuff like that the japanese are actually and sapporo as well as another good one you know i do actually 
quite appreciate the Japanese uh, the Japanese macro beers, but the ones that are brewed under license in Europe are not the same as the ones in um, as the ones actually out there in Japan. The Japanese learned to brew from the Germans, basically. They learned whiskey from the Scots, beer from the Germans, and they've got this thing, you know, itokodori. They take stuff in and they take stuff in that they think is useful and then try to make it better. And, you know, they've uh, they've done fairly well with their brewing. There's an interesting craft beer scene over there in Japan. And of course, if you go out there, make sure you try some of the, the sake, of course. Uh, I've not tried too many beers from uh, from China. I've had one or two from Taiwan. Uh, and I've reviewed, I did when I was in Korea um, nearly two years, well, about a year and a half ago. Um, I did manage to review quite a few Korean craft beers as well. They've got an interesting scene, um, but I didn't manage to try too many uh, lager beers, come to think of it. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. But yeah, the aroma on this one, the big rice, you know, it's, it's a little bit nostalgic for me because um, it does have a little bit of that kind of just rice is always quite oily and quite sweet. Um, and different, you know, different rice grains can give you slightly different aromas as well, uh, which is interesting. But yeah, the ricey quality in this beer, I think it's just, it's just really, really nice. Um, strikes me straight away. I mean, these rice lagers are very simple in terms of their aroma, and this one kind of, kind of captures that quite well. What you would want out of this beer would be authenticity, and from the aroma perspective, it does give you that. On the hoppy side of things, um, it's got a little touch of earthiness to it. You've got a nice little bit of... Um, it's got a nice, you've got a nice little bit of a, um, how would you say, mm, you get a nice little bit of a slightly herbal character to this one, a little bit of floral aromaticity. I do think it's probably German noble hops that is in this one. Maybe, you know, the other alternative would be Czech Sats or, um, or uh, maybe, you know, Slovenian uh, Styrian Goldings or something like this. Um, one of the noble type hops in there anyway. There's a little bit of grassy character in there. It's got a wee touch of zestiness to it. So yeah, that again is what you'd expect. On the fruity side of things, um, there's a wee bit of a kind of, for me that the fruits in this one come across as being quite gooseberry-like. There's maybe a little bit of pear, maybe a little touch of a more kind of sharper apple -y sort of thing going on. But yeah, it's exactly what you would expect from, uh, it is exactly what you would expect from uh, from this kind of beer. So uh, yeah, thumbs up to Stockholm Brewing on the aroma of this one. It's got their trademark kind of slightly uh, yeasty sort of quality to it, but then all the other things about it are pretty authentic. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. So this one is simply called Rice Lager. It comes in at 5.2% ABV and it comes to you from Stockholm Brewing Company. Obviously in Stockholm here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skoll, cheers. Yeah, I'm going to say straight away, I like this one. It's a nice big oily rice lager. Um, and yeah, Stockholm Brewing Company, this needs to be in 440s. Don't sell this in 330s. That's a complete waste um, because they just leave you wanting more. And, you know, um, for me, you know, I only tend to buy the beers once because it's, you know, it's the, it's the whole, for me, beer is all about the tasting things. But that, if you're going to sell that, that would be a good... Kind of, that would be a really good core range beer to sell in the restaurant, but don't sell it in 330s, sell it in 440s or in half litres. Always one of my big complaints with lager beers, 330s are just too too small, actually, for um, for these ones. But that could well be my favourite lager that I've had from them so far. The Pills that I had last time was quite an interesting one. Um, I'm sure that was, the was it called the Stockholm STHL Pilsner or something like that? I'm sure that's what it was called. But I think this might well be my favourite one that I've had from them so far. So, well done to them. Yeah. 330 millilitres is just too little for this one. So that's my one complaint about this beer. Just, you know... Too little in the way, too little in the way of volume. We we'll have to say that. Um, so yeah, take a little bit of time and just uh, enjoy, enjoy this. Just the flavour, the way this takes over your palate is really, really nice. So um, yeah, um, let's break down the flavour of this one then. So straight away with this beer, you can feel a little bit of the kind of barley malt just blanket in the middle of your palate. It feels like it does have a little bit of a kind of soft white breadiness or something there underneath and you do get a wee bit of a kind of biscuity McVitie's digestive sort of sweetness in the centre of the palate but on top of that very quickly you get that big oily ricey layer just kind of sitting on top there and it is very very nice if you go back towards the um 
the border region between middle third and um, and back third of your palate and you will get a wee bit of a kind of bread crusty note to this one definitely there is a wee bit of just a little bread crusty kind of quality to the beer there but then on the back third of your palate you will get one or two more kind of whole mealy sort of grainy type qualities out of the beer but again the ricey layer just kind of sits on top of that this is this is definitely one of the more oily rice laggers that I've come across before but I think that really suits it to be honest with you that's a really interesting thing I'd love to see the recipe for this and see um exactly how um you know how you would brew one of these but if I was to brew a rice lager this is kind of how I'd want it to taste this is how I would want it to taste and um, the sort of yeasty notes that I was talking about in this one you do get a little bit of a very slightly woody flavor evolving out of this one I think you know if you go to the front corners of the palate then move diagonally back you will get one or two little woody elements coming out of this beer which is quite interesting but um other than that i think it's quite um you know um other than that i think in the malt base other than a really nice kind of thick um layer sitting on top of that i don't think there's too much to report to be honest with you i think this is a really nicely executed rice lager beer so for me i always want these beers to just have a little bit of an oily character to them and a bit of sweetness and this one gives you that definitely Yeah, just disappointing. As I say, it needs to be a 4.40 rather than a 3.30 this. I'm going to moan about that throughout the whole review, so just be aware. I will moan about that. Um, yeah, um, but uh, yeah, the malty side of this beer and the adjunct, well, we should say adjunct because I guess rice is technically an adjunct rather than a malt. That is really nicely done in this one. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little touch of earthiness there. As you move further forward, there's a little bit of a herbal quality as well. And as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, um, of floral aromaticity coming out of the beer. But then yeah, round the very front curve of the palate, the beer is a little bit lighter and, uh, and more grassy in that sense as well. So yeah, I do like how... Um, now the green side of this beer sort of complements the other things that are going on. Um, so yeah, I think from the hoppy side of things, I would I think it must be some sort of German noble hop or something in this. The other obvious choice would be Soriachi Ace, but Soriachi Ace that's done over in America is not, it doesn't taste the same as the original Japanese one did. I mean, I think that'll be... There are a few little places in Japan um, experimenting with hops. I know that um, Uchu Brewing, there's a brewery called Uchu Brewing. I forget, is it Kanagawa they're from? Somewhere around Tokyo. It's, it's one of the regions around Tokyo. In Kanagawa Prefecture, there's a brewery called Uchu Brewing. It literally translates into English as space brewing. And they grow their own hops because the two people that started that brewery were farmers. They lived in, the, in California, in the States for a while. They learned how to brew, then they brought it back to Japan. So there are a few Japanese places i think also um shiga kogan beer who are part of uh, tamamura honten over in japan they're also producing some hops i've not heard of any hops being produced in in um, in korea or in taiwan i would guess that in mainland china probably there will be some places producing hops and things like that because you know they've got a hell of a lot of agricultural land to, over towards the west um but um yeah it's interesting it's interesting to think about that and um, that we might get more pardon me asian hops at some stages at some stage as well so um yeah food for thought in, pardon me yeah food for thought in this beer i have to say yeah food for thought with this one but um yeah it's interesting it's definitely interesting so yeah um the green side of the beer could be sorry actually ace because it does have a wee bit of that zest to it but i wouldn't be surprised if this is just a noble hop i would be curious to know what hop has been used in this one. But yeah, um, as I always say then, we'll look at the front third of your tongue because that's where you get the nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. You can feel a little bit of the barley malt just underneath that front third of your palate, but then the border region has a little bit of that kind of bread crusty sort of thing as well. But yeah, on the, the fruity side of things with this beer then, yeah, on the fruity side of things, um, Again, for me, I find this beer to be really sort of gooseberry-like. Um, yeah, there's a lot of gooseberry for me on that kind of front third of your palate, but it's, you know, it's quite a ricey sweetness. If you are familiar with Japanese sake, the, the rice it gets, I wouldn't be surprised if it's sake-grade rice that's been used in this. 
I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it is just you know um, a, a, some sort of sake grade rice that's that's been used in this one um, because it's it's got a lovely smoothness to it and with the with the rice you do get a sort of gooseberry sometimes a slight apricot kind of note out of these these types of rice but you will feel that towards the front edge of the tongue you do get a little bit of a citrusy zest builds in the beer um like i say a few kind of gooseberry characters as well so i find it i do find it really interesting how this this kind of beer pieces together actually so a little bit of a peri ester a little bit of an apple sort of thing and um yeah i like how how this goes together actually it's it's just a really well done beer this one i think this is probably my favorite lager that i've had from them so i think you know um i don't know how this one will sell because i don't know how big the appreciation for rice lagers actually is um but yeah it seems at the moment the beer scene is going through a whole period of, of re-diversifying which i think is a good thing because it's been far too kind of haze craze oriented for quite a wee while in my opinion so um yeah i would um I would say that for sure about this one. So um, yeah, I would definitely say that about this beer. But um, yeah, it's it's it, this one is a really nice example of a rice lager for me. I think it could be a very good core range beer, and I do hope that we see the appreciation of rice lagers come on a little bit. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, then to round off the review, I would say that this beer is quite. Um, I would say that it's it, it's kind of mid-bodied. For a lager beer, though, it is quite thick and quite oily. The carbonation is very, very smooth. Rice lagers don't tend to be that crisp, though, in a sense. They do tend to be refreshing and wet, but not so crisp, if that makes sense. The malty side of this beer, you get a bit of smoothness underneath, but I would say the malt base overall is quite oily in this one. There's not a lot of IBU to this beer. Um, Yeah, there's not a lot of IBU to this one. I'd be surprised if this beer's even got, you know, I think it's probably about 10 or 15 IBUs or something at the absolute most. But yeah, um, the fruity side of this beer is nice and oily, like I say, gooseberry, that sort of ricey fruitiness, and then a little bit of a wee zesty quality there. But I mean, overall, it's just a really nicely executed rice lager. Probably my favourite lager. I've had from Stockholm Brewer as well, but this is a real niche when it comes to, to craft beers. You don't find many of these, and I think there's only, there's probably only a small proportion if you like of people that are interested in craft beer that one know about this style and two uh, like it so yeah that's an interesting thing to think about so it would be cool to see this style just get a little bit more recognition but i think stockholm brewing have done well with this one so thumbs up to them for that so yeah i think that's a nice place to kind of round off this review to be honest with you i don't think there's much more we can say about this one so yeah this beer was simply called light uh, was simply called rice lager uh, 5.2% rice lager beer from Stockholm Brewing Company, really nicely executed in my opinion, got a good little bit of oily character to it, one of the more oily rice lagers I've come across, I enjoy this style and I hope that more people start to learn about it as well, but yeah, let's leave it at that for this one, so once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews, until the next time please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below, let me know what your favourite beers are from a Stockholm Brewing Company as well. Let me know some other rice laggers I should try. That would be interesting. But uh, yeah, this one was really nice. My only complaint is that it should be in a 440 can or a 500 ml bottle, something like that. 330 ml is, is, a too, is too small a serving to sell this one in. But you know, if it's a first try of the beer, I can kind of understand from the business perspective why they would do that. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Check out my social media, check out Stockholm Brewing Company, and I'll catch you guys very soon on the next review. Slandia, skull, cheers.